Hey guys, welcome into the Next Man Up podcast. You know this, I'm Mark, he's John, and we are honored to be with you for another episode. Hey, whether you're joining us today for the first time or you've been with us for a while, we're grateful you've chosen to be part of this community, the community that's about being and raising healthy and godly men. Hey, John, good to see you, man. Good to see you. And uh, I'm just going to acknowledge you you have a toboggan on your head. I do. It's it's chilly. It is chilly. This this is like required wear for me. Anytime the Mm -hmm. temperature starts with the number four or less, it's just it's just standard issue. And sometimes when I'm when I'm in the mood, it just it stays on with me inside too. And uh, the office is a little cool today, and so the the hat is on. And I I just got this hat last night too, so I'm kind of I'm kind of breaking it in, and so. Do you have a new smell? You know, it didn't so much, not like a a garment. Otherwise, it would have gone through the wash first. All right. Yeah. That's another episode. What do you do when you buy new clothes? Do you wear them or do you wash them first? (laughs) Maybe we'll just let somebody else do that episode. That that seems... (laughs) I can hear my kids saying, stay in your lane, brah. Yeah, there you go. Uh There you go. Uh All right. Well, welcome to 2023, man. Hey, happy new year. Happy new year. It's so weird. Everybody everywhere. It's so weird to me because nothing really changes from December 31 to January 1. But sure. psychologically, there's something that changes as we roll into the new year. And it's always such a... It's a time to capture the energy, capture Mm -hmm. the momentum, the moment. It's it's kind of that upswing moment on the heels of really a not not a like a like a downswing into the holidays. Not so much in experience, but in what people are thinking about and and thinking about the future and change and growth and all of that. Like we're just thinking about enjoying the holidays, and then you then you roll into January one and the new year, and it's like, bing, we've flipped mm-hmm. a switch, and now we're thinking about the the new year to come. E- even though, for most likely, nothing has changed from twelve thirty one to to one one. It's it's just a, it's just an interesting observation from from my vantage point. Yeah, and uh, I. It, it yeah I totally agree I feel like if you if you want to have intentional kind of I don't know what's the word emotion or feeling or direction or something uh, it's got to happen before December thirty first yeah <laughs> there's a there's a prior work or at least meditation something to help that January first not just be a calendar you know you rip the sheet off the calendar so mm-hmm. to speak it's like oh wow i really do have some direction for this year you got to get ahead of that if you w- really want to do that in order to make one one feel significantly different um right. at the same time there's also the opportunity to to capture that in january if you haven't done the work up sure. to this point oh yeah right 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 there's, yeah, you're not doomed if you didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> and I like, I didn't well, hear you're just gonna have a sucky year. Just just mail it in right now, January second. <laughs> it's 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 a total loss. Um, no, I didn't I didn't hear you saying that. Right. But uh, I I do know it's often it's often a moment where people pause to to start to think about the year to come. If they hadn't done it before the prior year closes, there's an opportunity as the new year opens. And now we've, we've talked uh, on, on this episode, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before about rethinking new year's resolutions and, and not going that route, but going a different route, doing, doing something different, doing something better. Uh, and, and that's really the, the, I guess an extension of that discussion is what I wanted to get into today. Just an, another way, like what if, what if you're listening and you haven't done a bunch of prep work to roll into this new year 
and be ready to go after it? Or what if this is this is something that's not necessarily been part of your discipline or your routine in the past, but you're looking to make a change, do something different. What we want to dialogue about in, in this conversation is an idea of choosing a word for the year. Or sometimes I add a short phrase because in my history, I've used both. Um, but what would it look like? And John, what has been your experience? What has been my experience? If you choose a, a word to help, help kind of focus the upcoming year and what, um, what might that do for you? That's what we want to, to really get into today. Mm -hmm. When I first heard of this, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, like, Someone please explain that to me because I, I don't quite get it when I first heard it. Hmm. And then when I heard it explained, I'm like, oh, I like that. So, yeah, it's been four or five years ago since I started doing that. And I'll start thinking about it like October. Hmm. Uh, just that's, that's how my brain works. Like the year's winding down. Uh, so I it's been quite a useful personal tool um, for a whole bunch of reasons. And I already have my word for 2023 because, you know, I'm an overachiever. Of course. Um, but yeah, I find it to be a, a different direction versus, oh, uh, let me set these goals per se, because it's not really goal setting. It might help you set goals, but yeah. that's not the point of it. Yeah. It's to give you some direction that works for a 12 year, a 12 month period. It's not a life thing. It's not a, you know, it's not a value setting exercise. It's just, here's where I'm at right now. And maybe it could be a word that stretches you. That It doesn't have to have a particular goal in mind, like I said already, but just, it could do all kinds of things. And I guess that's what we'll talk about. Yeah, it it yeah. can do all kinds of things for you. It's interesting because four or five years ago for me, I I realized what I had been doing for a couple of years. And, and let me let me explain that. So in my professional pivot, I gravitated to a word and specifically I chose adventure. And and like intuitively I knew that Mark needed to see this unknown experience that I was walking into as more of an adventure rather than this fog or this wilderness or this difficult period of uncertainty and um, a season filled with fear. Like I, I've lived that in the past and I wanted to do something different. So I gravitated to, toward adventure and just kind of held that forefront for me for a couple of years before I realized, oh, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because I heard right. somebody somebody challenge a group of people to select a word for the year to help get your focus and um, provide some direction. I'm like, oh, oh, that's what I've been doing. Oh, this is cool mm -hmm. because I'm already bought into the concept. Now I have a, a description or a container to, to put it in. And right. ever since, like you, around the – really for me, it's around November – I get started with a with a with a process of of selecting a word, which for me, I don't know how you do it, John, but for me, up until this year, this year's different, and i'll I'll describe that in a minute. But I start with like a a list, like a brain dump of all the potential things that are kind of on my mind, directions to go, ideas to spur more ideas. And over time, I whittle that list down to the word that ultimately emerges. And it's it's partly selecting, partly it emerges, partly I feel my way into the, in, into the word. Um, but often that process for me takes a long time and I'm well into January before I've even uh, landed mm -hmm. on the word. But time and time again... It has served me so well 
in particular last year, like there's a, there was a good space in between adventure and last year or, or my 2022 word, which was cooperate. Um, there was a, a good stretch in between there that was relevant, but last year, boy, it just, it really represented the, a, a combination of things for me. It, it was what I was looking for. So it helped to, to kind of keep me in the forefront of um, seeing opportunities, places to cooperate. And it also was a reminder of this is the posture that I'm carrying mm. into mm. how I'm living next year. So kind of like a, a give and a, an, and a take, push and pull type of thing. And there were there there was more th- more things that that came up than I will recount here. But early on and all throughout the last year, this word continued to to give to me mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. in both of those places, seeing opportunities as well as the reminder for me of this is this is how I want to be showing up. I want to be cooperating with what God is doing, with what's happening around me, cooperating with the the changes that I don't want and cooperating mm-hmm. with the things that have me excited and circumstances that are favorable, like both of those at the at the same time. And so um, in fact, I'm, I'm staring at a picture of the word and, a, and an image that's represented to me through this, through this word on my wall just now mm-hmm. as another reminder of what 22 has been. So and anyway, my, my process similar to yours is before, before the end of the year or early on, gravitate to that word. And I, I have seen significant benefit from having that word or that phrase to lock into for a 12-month season. In response, uh, I love the word posture that you said. Um, I think it's a good image for us to hit on and stay on for what this helps uh, achieve in your mind, and I would even say in your body and your spirit, you know, when your when your posture is fixed, in a good way, uh, but when when your posture is fixed, man, it gives you confidence, it gives you clarity, it mm-hmm. gives you some good grounding, uh, helps you maybe even know some identity kind of thing, at least in the moment. So I really like that posturing thing. As for how I go about it. Uh, I don't know that I've ever done what you described as far as like a brain load of words and narrowed it down. I don't recall ever doing that. Um, It's more like I'm just paying attention. Mm. And when the word, uh, it's never failed. It just comes and I'm like, oh, that's it. And it's, uh, I like to think, and I think I'm right. (laughs) That as the years, you know, come and go, the word is following the previous year's word to continue my journey. Mm. So that's what I've seen so far. Uh, At least I feel that way. Uh, I I can't say I've chronicled it to, you know, it certainly led to this word. It, It just feels that way, that it's a continuation of the last 12 months. It's just. I don't want to say redirect, but it's uh, not sure what the right word is. It's a turn in the road, whatever yeah. you want to call it. The, next, se- the next season. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I don't look at a list of words, although I think that could be quite helpful, particularly if you've never done this before. It's like, how do I pick a word? Is it a preposition? <laughs> uh, maybe, <laughs> probably not, but, you know. How do I pick a word? If you just Google this, which maybe we need to do that and give some, which I remember I've done that before, some blog posts that people have written about this kind of concept, just, and they'll have a list of words in there. Mm-hmm. If you're not, if you haven't done this before guys, uh, that's a good way to go about it and explore it and figure out, you know, that whittling down of, where am I and what word is best? It could be a couple words. One year I used two words. It was better and deeper. That was my two words for the year. 
Um, cause I, I couldn't decide between the two and I liked them together. So yeah, I just, yeah. I went with that. So, yeah. And it's, it's less about constraints or rules probably. Mm-hmm. And, right. and more about giving yourself a, something simple that that can be at the forefront of your mind on a regular basis and that you can just you can just lock into mm-hmm. I, I like i like how you describe the just letting the word come just letting letting it materialize and and right. i think in my own way that's how i was doing it too but i, I was starting with a list and then from that list um letting it emerge. But that's how I, that's how I do a lot of things. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a list maker and, and idea dumper and you're just doing all that in, in your brain. You, you've got right. the capacity to sort, sure. sort it out in that way. And so, so probably the one recommendation is for those that are, that want to attempt this, how do you typically make a decision? If you're a list maker, then make a list. If you're mm-hmm. more in the moment and spontaneous, then go with that too. You know, what, whatever works for you, um, work with that instead of trying to, yeah. to work against it. And, and then just let, let, it, let it come, let it play out. The other thing, John, that, that you prompted is having a record over time of the year and the word can help chronicle our own journeys. Like, oh, yeah. I, I remember. So this, this was interesting, rolling into 2020, which is now forever defined by COVID, mm-hmm. my word was flourish. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea at the time when I chose it what 2020 was going to be. And like it's it's pretty it's pretty ballsy to to try to to try to take a flourish mindset into a global pandemic environment and all that that represented and yet it helped me i can remember mm-hmm. a couple specific things that i engaged in because i'm seeing that word on the wall i'm reminding that reminding myself that this is the posture that i want to have even in the midst of this difficulty um, did I flourish? I don't know, but it helped to, to keep me, keep me focused in, in the midst of circumstances that were just unreal once in a lifetime, probably circumstances mm-hmm. for us to navigate through. I would, uh, guess having that word flourish helped you not do the opposite. You know, yes. let's say the word would be wither. Yes. You didn't wither. You didn't die. You didn't crumble. You right. know, whatever other word you want to use, because you had that already set mindset that you could keep tapping into. That's right. That's right. Same with same with cooperate for last year. What was your word? I, I'm sure you've told me, and it just hasn't hasn't cemented. What was your word for last for 2022 last year? Flow. Flow. Got it. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. How did how did that show up for you? You mean how did I de- how during the year or when I picked the word during the year? How did that um, mm-hmm. how did that show up for you? So um, multiple ways. For the first time, I went down the lane of having a scripture that went along with that word, a, a particular verse, and. Literally, it's it's right over there. I'm like six feet from my kitchen table, and that that Bible has stayed open to that verse mm-hmm. all year long. I mean, well, I have flipped around in that Bible just for you know satisfy the guilt thought there. But anyway, it, it has <laughs> stayed open to that verse, and you know, every day and that I'm sitting there, it, it's just right there as a reminder, like you have your word on the wall, yeah. you know, kind of deal. Uh, I have also occasionally not with any regiment to it, but I have also used that as sort of a evaluative assessment tool uh, throughout the year, whether that's journaling or just in a coaching conversation, you know, whatever, of sort of check my flow you know, through the year. 
And that means for me, that means, you know, all of who I am in my work, in my relationships, in my spiritual disciplines, uh, you know, all of, all of who I am, uh, is there, you know, and go down the list of kind of coaching questions, you know, are there any barriers in the way of what I had wanted for this word to be, or I envisioned this year to be like, and if there are, what am I doing about them? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it, you know, occasionally journaling, and also, I would say a huge role in addressing this this year is pursuing gratitude. Mm-hmm. That when I do see, oh, wow, this is flowing well, or because XYZ happened, now this and this and this is happening. And expressing that between me and God, that gratitude of, well, it's back to the verse that the promise in that verse is that springs of living water will flow in your life. You know, when you have this unhindered, pure relationship with God going on, I, don't, I didn't have that all 365 days, but you know, when, when you have that going on, that's the promise. So I can pause and be grateful that this is what this word and this mindset and intentionality is producing so those are a couple of ways that i saw it play out for me this year one of the one of the things i like about what you said that his that i've experienced is i i've felt like this word this process is a way for me to receive something from from god from father that he wants to give me. Mm-hmm. And it's not just the word, it, it, it's what comes with it as a result of being focused here. Um, and so for you to have that, that verse connection is, is super cool because I, I think there's, I think there is a, a, a message, a, there's a spiritual component here that right. we can tap into right. that, that, guides the word selection, which then guides our focus and allows us to, to not just receive the word, but to receive the inspiration, the, the mindset, the thinking, the experience, the other things that are connected to this as we're, as we're looking for it, because we're focused on this word, like for, for, 22 cooperate for me i added a hyphen between the co and the operate hmm. not because that's english correct but because it's another emphasis that i wanted to add and in the spiritual component for me what it meant is yes god is active and he's operating in my life that's a promise and i've i've seen that but he's also inviting me to be active and operate with what's happening as well there's the co Let's mm-hmm. do this together, the co-operate. And so it took on, perhaps more so than in years past, it took on more of a, a spiritual component for, for me last year. And, and, and this year, I'm curious what your word is. Mine just, mine just came to me, man. It just, I, I realized probably mid-November that I hadn't really done any thinking or planning toward the the end of the year and rolling into the next year. I'm like, oh, I should start doing some thinking about my word for next year. And and I didn't even have opportunity, didn't have time to make a list, and the word pops into my head, and it's it's celebrate. Hmm. And I'm already seeing how that is working into my life um, leading up to the new year. And I'm in a I'm in a season of life where there will be opportunity to celebrate milestones. But I'm also excited about what's what's to come. And the spiritual tie-in for me here that I'm I'm curious to see if and how this might play out and whatever else plays out. I'm really rolling into year seven of my professional pivot all throughout the Old mm. Testament. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. There's references to the seventh day, the seventh month, the seventh week, the seventh year, the seven times seventh year. And mm-hmm. in all of those, there is an element of celebration. Yeah. So what does that mean? I don't know, but it's it it's... It's a question mark that I'm excited to see play out as I as I roll throughout this next year. Well, in a very selfish request, I would love to see it play out in some type of video with you lip singing "Cool in the Game." <laughs> okay, please. Okay, can we get uh, that? Uh, we'll we'll see what we can do. All right. Well, I that's really awesome the whole seven, you know, concept there for you. Yeah. Um, and this, this is what I think we get to experience and God's gracious enough to, uh, you know, bless us with that kind of experience. Like, wow, this is flowing together. It's connecting together. It's giving me direction. I can look back and see how not only what my journey has been like, but what God and, my journey has been like together. Um, it, it's there's a lot of value. It's just a whole lot of value. Yep. In doing this exercise, I think. Yep, I agree. And, and I would also say, like we we've been kind of focused on the individual exercise, but for for dads, maybe this is new to you, and it would make sense to just experiment with it, try it mm-hmm. individually, and and see yeah. what happens. But if if you're also, maybe you've been doing this yourself or you want to be a little bit more ambitious, consider doing a word for the family, a word over the family, and, and even integrate the wife and the kids into, um, into the process. And, and maybe it's too much chaos or maybe your kids are too young to let them contribute to the word. But if you if you bring to them and say, Hey, this is, this is a posture that I want us to have as a family. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be focused on this word and and then reminding, reviewing, revisiting this, whether it's something on the wall, I've got, I've got my word words on phone screen, computer screens, you know, it's part of my journaling process. If, if it's not front and center, you will forget, but what would it look like to do it for your family? Or if your kids are old enough to really engage, what would it look like to, to guide them through a process of selecting a word and helping them to be focused on that word? And, and, and again, helping them to stay accountable to reviewing and remembering and, and looking. Like the cool thing here is when you activate the brain by telling the brain this is important to you, it will find evidence. It will That's see right. it. It will read things, translate, mm-hmm. interpret things that you would have missed previously. It's it's the same reason why when you buy a new-to-you car, mm-hmm. you start to see them everywhere on the road, and you just you didn't before. Like, the, the brain is is recognizing and activating around something that you're telling it is important. And so this is this is a way for you to to demonstrate and, and lead lead your kids, especially if if they're older, to to begin to experiment with this practice. Um, and it's it's also really a way to introduce goal setting with your kids or vision casting with your kids. And like both John and I said, tying in a spiritual component. What what does God have to say into this moment as you're selecting a word or as you're receiving a word or an idea? And then how does that play out as as he whispers and guides over um, over the season? So those those are those are my encouragements and suggestions for how you can take this beyond just you, uh, but really lead in your family. It, what what would you add to that, if if anything, John? Or what what uh, what other thoughts do you have? There's a thousand ways it feels like you could go with this, <laughs> but uh, just following what you uh, threw out there, this could be between you and your wife if you're married. Mm. It could be between just you and your wife as well. Um, it could be interesting dialogue for you to lead 
the conversation uh, and maybe your wife would have her own word as well. Um, I mean, so many things. I think another helpful, com uh, I'll say complete usage of it is to think through the different arenas of your life as well. How does this word impact my finances? How does this word impact my work? And, you know, I'll go through the list because you, you may find some awareness opens up about some area of your life just because you're giving it a different viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, uh, I, I, I know that's happened for me. So it's not just, um, a, a spiritual component. Certainly it's, that's huge, but think about the entirety of your life and how this word can play out. I'll mention one other thing. If you're back to that, how do you figure out your word thing? Um, I would say if you're listening to podcasts, not necessarily ours, but you, know, you can get it from ours. But if you're listening to other podcasts or you have a favorite author you're reading or uh, a particular sermon that you're listening to, whether it's your pastor or somebody online, whatever, and a particular thought just smacks you in the head, sit in that mm. because that thought may lead you to your word. There's a reason why it smacked you in the head. And so I'd encourage you to just sit in whatever that is. I, I would imagine it's you're being reminded of something as you hear me describe that. And maybe you have to go back and re-listen to something or reread something just to dig deeper into, well, wh why did that draw my attention? What was, what was God maybe trying to say to me there that gives me some direction for 2023? Yeah. I think that's the way my brain works. When I said earlier about just paying attention, you know, sit in whatever gets your attention, sit in it and see if there's something there to draw from. Yeah, I like that. What is your word for 23? I, this could be interesting to see how this word plays out for me. The word is rich. Mm. I've never picked a word that has such... I don't even know how to describe it. It, it has such um, vagueness to it that is intriguing to me. Um, and it's not about monetary. That, that's not what that word is about in this case. So that's my word. If you'd like, I could tell you how I got there. We don't have to, but it's, it's a, uh, it, when it hit me, I'm like, you know, well, that's, that's different. <laughs> And I didn't pick it just because it's different. It it spoke, and the way it was delivered, it's like, okay, I don't have to wonder anymore. That's the word. Interesting. That's mm -hmm. so that's so cool. Again, receiving, noticing, being available, yeah. pausing to to just to just stop and reflect, breathe, meditate, whatever, be still, and and receive what comes. And then continue to receive from that as you as you resume and as you as you go throughout this next season. Super cool. I would say that's an illustration, and I'm gonna drop it in my brain right now. I want to say it's John 15, whatever chapter it is, uh, where Jesus is teaching on the vine, mm. where he says, "I'm the vine, and you're the branches. Remain in me. Abide in me." This is an illustration of what he was teaching. Mm. That's cool. I've never heard it um, connected to to this, so that's cool. Well, guys, we're early, early, early into 2023, but who knows how this is going to play out? Who knows how it's going to play out for, for John and this idea of rich? Who knows how it's going to play out for Mark and the idea of celebrate? Who knows how it's going to play out for you? But I hope what you've heard is some positive experience with this discipline, with this process of selecting a word and then letting it work on you 
and continue to give as you go throughout the, the year. We both have had great experiences. We're not the only ones. This is not unique to us. It's not our idea. It's not original to us. We've tapped into something that you can tap into as well. And so encourage you to do that and to grow in your leadership as a husband and as a father. What could this look like for you to tap into this? In, in the way you lead at home. What could that look like? What could that open up for you, for your wife, for your kids, for your whole family? That's our challenge and that's our invitation as we progress throughout this new year. John, happy new year once again to you. I look forward to hearing your experiences with Rich and um, maybe we can even celebrate together at points along nice. the way. Look at um, that. We actually have something lined up. Looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Yes. Um, that's mm-hmm. a separate conversation. But looking forward to hearing how your word and sharing how mine impacts us and shapes us throughout the new year. And uh, again, invite you listeners to, to engage with this process for your own benefit and growth. There's there's some richness there that you can tap into and then celebrate the return as a, as a result. How about that? Worked our words both. I see what you did there. I see what you did. (laughs) All right, guys, let's wrap it. We'll put a a happy new year bow on this. All the best to you in the new year to come. And uh, we'll be back once again next week. Until then, adios. To send us your comments or questions, you can email us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. The theme music is by Jacob Stanifer at Jacob Stanifer Music, and this show is part of the NRT Podcast Network.